Let's use a schematic this time to demonstrate how we can identify which is missing, power, load, or ground. Remember from a previous video that the power side of the circuit is everything from the positive battery terminal up to the positive side of the load, or in this case, the first bulb. And the load is everything from where the first load starts to where the last load ends. So if there's more than one load in the circuit, the load part of the circuit is where the voltage is going to get used up. And if there was only one load in the circuit or one bulb, the load part of the circuit would just be from here to here. But in this case, the load is from here to here because the two loads are in series and that's where the voltage gets used up. And then there's the ground path that goes from the negative side of the last load in the path and it goes all the way back to the negative battery. Let me show you a few examples of what it would look like if there was a fault that was the power side missing or defective or the load missing or defective or the ground path missing or defective. So let's start with power. So now we can see that the power side is definitely at fault here because the word power is missing. But what does that mean on the picture? Well, for one thing, it means that the bulbs are not lit anymore. The switch is still closed, so it looks like everything should be working, but something is not working. And this is how most situations come into a shop or whenever something happens to your own personal car, this is what you get. You've operated the switch the way you normally do and you don't get the result you want, lighting up the bulbs or whatever the device is. And if power was missing, what it means is there is a fault, either an open or a high resistance problem or something defective or missing in the power side of the circuit. The problem could be anywhere in this path that we determined was the power side on this particular picture earlier. It could be that it's just in this wire. There could be a break in the wire or corrosion here. It could be that the switch is physically closed but internally the switch is defective where maybe there's an open in it. It could be that the wire between the fuse and the switch is bad. It could be right here, or it could be over here in this location. And it could be even before the fuse or the fuse itself. So maybe there's an open circuit here, a break in the wire, and maybe there's something else that's wrong, which is a short to ground, perhaps right here, which caused the fuse to blow which then interrupted the power circuit. So even though we had a short to ground, we wound up blowing the fuse, which created an open, which now is no longer allowing the voltage from the battery to get where it needs to go. If the load was missing, then it could be that there's just a fault in the wire between the two loads, or it could be one of the loads themselves. Perhaps bulb number one is blown out, or bulb number two is blown out. The situation would be the same thing. We'd have a circuit that's not working. We have power applied to it. The switch is on. None of the bulbs are lighting, and we would make a test and find that the power circuit is good, and we'll talk more about what readings we would need to see to tell us that the power circuit is good. Once we determine that the power side of the circuit is good, then we would go and test the load part of the circuit. So the third thing that we talked about earlier was that the ground could be missing or defective. Let's take a look at what that might look like on the schematic. So here we are again, and we can see that the ground is missing over here, the word ground, but what would that look like on the picture? It could be that there's a break in the wire, the ground path right after the bulb. It could be right near the bulb, it also could be somewhere along the path on the way back to the battery. It could be right here, it could be right here, and it could be right over here. So there are readings that we can make that will tell us if it's the power side, if it's the load, and if it's the ground side. It's much simpler than you think. Once you understand what you're looking for on the picture and understand what the different readings mean, your job becomes very easy.